Okay, good morning. Welcome to this video looking at population change in the UK. Um, the aim of this session is to look at what is going on with the UK's population to figure out how it's changing in the short term and potentially in the long term as well. I'm going to show you a few, picked, a few maps over the next few slides and it's going to be looking at a variety of different things. The sources for this information came from the two websites below on this link. These are useful websites and you should play around with them in relation to your homework which you're going to have set as well. So, what we have on the screen here is we've got two maps. We've got maps of where uh, my surname comes from which is our bottom left hand map here um, and you can see that these maps are from 1981, uh, sorry, 1881, and what we have is a large portion of my surname coming from the southeast, whereas Miss Johnson's, most of hers is coming from the northeast. Okay, so we've got changing relationships and spatial distribution to our families. This is important, it's understanding why this is occurring that's the key. Okay, now the next few slides will kind of highlight some different students. So, what you need to do is guess who from the class relates to these two maps. Okay, so have a guess. One on the left, this is Sam's map. Okay, this is where the Verindas were in 1881. On the right, we've got the, where the Cliftons were in 1881. You can see that different surnames have different levels of popularity in different regions. Okay, here's another. Okay, we've got one, one group of you who's located really um, in East Anglia and then the other one who's located in the West Country. So, who we got? Well, we've got Dan Hubbard on the left and Dan Stallard on the right, looking at that distribution and thinking about where our families are coming from. Okay, next two. Um, the one on the right is um, surprising actually because I'm surprised we actually found any data for it at all. Okay, but here we go. So, on the left, we've got Sam's map. Okay, and on the right we've got Tara's map. Okay, and if I'd probably gone 50 years before, probably wouldn't have got anything for Tara's map from 1881. But you can see how the distribution is changing. Now, um, last map that we've got is Harry's map. This is uh, Harry's uh, the distribution of Harry's family from 1881, and you can see where we are. Now, what you'll notice is that there's three people missing from this list. Okay, well. One of the reasons behind this is because up until uh, more recently, these the top three surnames were completely untraceable, and you can see where these surnames come from, what subgroup they are, and what language they're based on. Now, these were all sourced from that global um, distribution site. Now, what we can do is look at the world map of these surnames. Okay. And this is for Europe, and what we can see is for um, Tossin, we've got a very dense distribution in the southeast of, of the UK and Europe. Okay, but there's very little uh, distributed elsewhere across the, across the world. Okay, here's Sydney. Again, we've got that dense distribution in the southeast, slowly creeping up into northern England. Okay, but very few else. I did have a map which highlighted a large proportion of uh, Mutanderos in Austria as well. Okay, and then this is the map for Suleiman across the globe. Okay, and what you can see is large distribution. Now, what's surprising is is if this surname has Turkish origin, there's no, there's very few people actually located in Turkey from this map. So that's quite a surprise. Okay, but you can see the different distributions and densities of different population. Now, what we want you to do, and what I want you to do, is to analyse the changes to the UK's population. If you look through your textbook, there is an entire chapter based on this, and the chapter which we're interested in, because what we're looking at is the globalisation of population, the chapter which we're looking in is called Roots, and it's chapter 11, and it looks at changes in family size, it talks about changes in population structure and migration, and how these at different areas are actually changing across the country. Now, What's happened over time is this is the accurate demographic transition model for the UK. And what's happened over time is we can see that our birth rate has fluctuated up and down, but largely gone down, whereas our death rate has been in a general rate of decline. And it's this continuous trend and these continuous variations which explains our trends in population. What you'll notice here is that the birth rate and death rate is becoming increasingly close together and at one point in the 1970s we actually had a period of natural decrease with the population going down. Um, we're, we're around this point now but migration is leading to the birth rate going back up again. So this presents a series of challenges and we need to figure out why the UK population is changing. 
the, this t uh, table here presents the key ideas. We get changes to birth rates, changes to death rates, changes to immigration, okay, and changes to emigration as well. Largely, we have more people immigrating than emigrating, though, um, and it's thinking about these relationships. So, what do I want you to do? Well, you're going to need to read page 124 to 127. Okay, and I want you to explain the pattern of population change. You need to consider the birth rate, the life expectancy, and the migration. And what I really want you to focus on and consider as well is the issues in terms of consumption and consumerism. So you need to look at these two areas. Now the homework which I'm going to set you for this is I want you to actually do some research on your family. You need to find out about your family history. I'm not asking you to draw a family tree. But what I do want you to do is explain the process you go through to investigate your family history. If you have a look at pages 123 and 24 of your textbook, it highlights a number of different areas you need to look at. This was a question on the exam paper this year, um, and they keep throwing it in as five mark questions. It was an essay, it was a 10 mark question at this point in time, so it's likely to come up as five mark questions. And the question's about how you'd go about researching, how you'd find out this information. So I want you to go through the process and actually investigate your family history and consider the different aspects of the population. Okay, now one thing I've realised is that I've ended up setting you two pieces of homework. So the second piece of homework, which is the essay, um, which comes up in the second video, can you please ignore for me? Okay, and that ends this session.